The revolt that put Russia on the verge of civil war looks to be finished. For the time being, as Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin departs for exile. After seizing a significant city and important military locations in a swift push, the mercenary leader had reached a distance of 120 miles from Moscow in an amazing 24 hours of mayhem. Russian forces equipped with machine guns, tanks, and helicopters rushed to the capital to repel the attack as Prigozhin proclaimed that his men were willing to die for their cause. However, the unexpected attack was aborted because the warlord abruptly withdrew after reaching a last-minute agreement with the Kremlin. Even though it came to an early conclusion, Vladimir Putin's military takeover will be remembered as the most serious challenge he ever faced while in power. The dramatic events began late on Friday when Prigozhin released a shocking video asking for an armed uprising. It happened while hostilities between the warlord and Russian generals, who had attempted to disarm him by forcing his soldiers to enlist in the regular army, were reaching new heights. The rebel commander boasted that he had 50,000 warriors prepared to engage the Russian army in combat and invited regular troops to join them in a direct threat to the Kremlin. He described the action as a march for justice against the top brass, including Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu, while wearing military fatigues. His soldiers were said to have crossed various Russian-Ukrainian borders just after midnight and to be heading in the direction of Rostov-on-Don. The important southern city, where Wagner was serving with Russian soldiers, is just 60 miles from the Ukrainian border. As a result, the Kremlin filed a criminal complaint against Prigozhin, referring to him as a foreign agent who had instigated a armed rebellion. In Rostov and Moscow, Operation Fortress, which calls for full readiness from all military personnel, had already been put into effect. By one in the morning, Russian troops were on high alert, moving soldiers, armoured vehicles, and military helicopters to strategic areas. As Putin signed a bill allowing for up to 30 days of detention, pictures showed soldiers erecting machine gun nests. At approximately two in the morning, Rostov residents were instructed to lock themselves inside as panicked individuals resorted to frantic food purchases. Around this time, Wagner's commander said his troops had shot down a Russian chopper that had started fire on a civilian convoy but provided no additional information. The M4 North-South Highway, which connects Moscow to the south, was advised to avoid by authorities in the Russian Voronezh area at 3 a.m. because of a military convoy. The warlord said he had captured Rostov-on-Don at the start of the day. He said the southern military district of Russia's headquarters was taken at 5.30 a.m. on Saturday without firing a single shot, and that up to 70 Russian troops joined them. According to a statement from the Kremlin's defense ministry, the fighters had been deceived and dragged into a criminal adventure. In a TV speech at 8 in the morning, Putin acknowledged that the situation was complicated and that the rebels had taken over Ostav's military installations. He foresaw inevitable punishment for the guilty. By 9 am, the rebels' approach had been slowed down by blocking the highways to Moscow and constructing sandbags and moats. In Voronezh, a city located midway between Rostov and the capital Moscow, sources said Wagner had gained control of military installations. According to reports, they encountered considerable opposition. Gunshots and explosions could be heard.
Putin made a speech about Prigozhin and his soldiers being traitors shortly before 11 o'clock in the morning. In response, Prigozhin said that Putin was seriously incorrect and added that his men would not submit. Later that morning, Ramzan Kadyrov, the leader of Chechnya, supported Putin and said that his troops were already travelling to these zones of tension, adding, the rebellion must be crushed. Authorities in the Lipetsk region reported that the rebels were transporting equipment through the area around midday. The territory is just about 250 miles from Moscow. One of Putin's jets allegedly headed for St. Petersburg when it took off from Moscow at 2.16 p.m. However, the Kremlin refuted claims that he had left the city. Tickets for commercial flights out of Moscow sold out as British people were advised to evacuate amid fears of violent conflicts, while a number of private planes also took out from Moscow. According to reports, private jets carrying oligarchs, including Arkady Rotenberg and Russia's richest man Vladimir Potanin, departed Moscow for Azerbaijan and Turkey. By 3 p.m., the two-mile-long rebel convoy had made it past Voronezh, the midway point, and was on its way to Yelets. Moscow proclaimed Monday a non-working day just before 4.30 p.m. and announced the ability to impose travel restrictions, monitor communications, conduct searches, and even order people to leave. In Kiev, the battle was eagerly welcomed, and it is thought that Ukrainian troops took full advantage of the confusion by pushing up their offensive along the trenches in northern Bakhmut. President Volodymyr Zelensky tweeted during the chaos, for a long time, Russia employed propaganda to hide its weakness and the foolishness of its administration. There is currently so much disarray that no falsehood can cover it up. The military minister of Ukraine's advisor said that they were running out of popcorn as they attentively followed the rebellion. A region that had been under Russian control since 2014, close to Krasnoharivka in southwest Donetsk, was allegedly freed by Ukraine one week ago. Due to tactical considerations, the win was kept a secret until Saturday. In an unexpected turn of events, Prigozhin decided against attacking after reaching an understanding with Putin. When he gave the order to stop his troops at 6.30 p.m., it was just 1.20 miles from Moscow. Without losing a drop of our warrior's blood, we got 200 kilometers closer to Moscow in under 24 hours. The time has arrived for blood to be shed, according to Prigozhin. It happened following a last-minute agreement that the Kremlin dropped intentions to liquidate the Wagner military business, which was mediated by Belarusian despot Alexander Lukashenko. The agreement also called for Prigozhin to relocate to Belarus and the dismissal of all criminal proceedings against him and his troops. Wagner forces reportedly began to depart Rostov at approximately 8.30 p.m. and were fully believed to have left by 11 p.m.